When we want to add a style sheet to our GWT module, we have a couple of different ways we can go about this. One is we could go into our configuration file and specify the style sheet by using the style sheet element. In this case, we're saying that we want to use the to-do list.css file. Of course, there's also the traditional way in your HTML or in your JSP page to just have a link tag and specify the cascading style sheet there. The difference between the two is that when you specify the style sheet inside of your entry point uh, HTML file, the one that was configured or what's going to actually call into uh, loading our GWT module, is that if someone else inherits our module, they will not get the style sheet that's defined in this entry point. Why? Because they're going to have their own entry point. So they won't be using our styles. If we want to enforce our styles and make sure that they're using them with our module, then we want to place it here inside of our configuration file. So that's how we link the style sheet. In this case, I took the style sheet that was generated and just put a few extra styles for my to-do list. Uh, some styles for labels, some styles for text, for the button. Nothing too fancy, just I wanted to um, just make it look a little bit neater. So now that I've created some basic styles, what I'm going to want to do is apply them to my task table. So let's take a look at that code. In the task table, what I'm able to do is use an object that the flex table contains. The flex table has both a row formatter and a cell formatter. And when I get a handle to those objects, I'm able to call a method on them. And that method is add style name. So for example, with my row formatter, the add style name takes uh, two parameters, a index of what row I want to add the style to, and then the name of the style that I'm referencing. If I scroll down a little bit, we'll see our cell formatter, and I call it again the method add style name. In this case, it's going to take three parameters. It's going to have the uh, index of the row that I'm in, um, the index of the cell, and then it's going to take the name of the uh, style that I want to add. So pretty simple. Just get the formatter, call add style name, and then add the style that you wish to add. So let's take a look at what this looks like now. Okay, so things are starting to look a little bit more sharp. I have just some basic styles in my task table. So now the next thing that I want to show you is how we're able to pass objects back and forth between the client side code that's generated and some code on the server. So let's add some RPC functionality. In order to enable RPC communication between the client side uh, generated JavaScript and uh, methods on the server, there's several things that we have to do. So let's start at the beginning. Let's create an interface um, that will define all the types of methods that we want to expose on the server uh, that can be called by the JavaScript. So I create an interface, and in this case I'm calling it taskless service, and it has to extend something called remote service. This is something that uh, GWT provides for us. You'll also no notice that I have an annotation for remote service relative path. This is going to be a URL that it will call back into the server um, to, that will act basically as a servlet to accept the incoming request to either um, serialize or deserialize the objects as it needs to and then uh, call into the methods it needs. So let's look at some of the methods I created. I want to be able to remove a task um, I want to get all tasks, um, get a specific task. So just by taking a quick look at some of the methods I've created here, it's obvious that I'm going to need to serialize my task object. So let's jump over to my task object. And you'll see that what I've done now is I've implemented is serializable. This is, again, another interface. It's a marker interface. It doesn't have any... Uh, methods you have to implement, but just like the serializable interface with Java, um, GWT has their own and you need to use it to say, yep, this, this class can in fact be serializable. So I add that to my task. Now that I've created my 
task list service uh, interface, and this is again what's going to be exposed on the server, I need to implement those methods. So on my server side, I'm going to create a class called task list service impl, and it will extend uh, remote service servlet. So that's going to add some servlet-like uh, functionality to be able to deal with an HTTP request, and we'll implement that task list service method that I have. In this case, I just have really some stubs of methods. I don't really have anything inside there other than to print out a little message in the console so that we can actually see that, yes, the JavaScript was able to um, call into the server. So let's take a quick look at our directory tree and see where each of these files uh, has been placed. In our client package, we are going to have our task list service interface. We now have a new package. This is called with ending on dot server instead of dot client, and that's where all of our server side logic is going to live, uh, at least up to the point of a controller. So we have a task list service impl.java, and that's in our server directory, which implements the task list service dot java file that's in our client directory. What else do we need to do? Well, now we need to make an asynchronous interface, and that's what's going to be um, used by the JavaScript um, to be able to call into our server code through an asynchronous manner, hence AJAX. So what is the difference between our taskless service interface and our taskless service async interface? Several things. First of all, we are going to copy the exact name of our service interface, but we're going to add it, um, add a suffix to it, async. So tasklessservice.java was our service interface that extended remote service. Tasklessserviceasync.java is going to be our asynchronous interface. Um, and note that it doesn't extend any other interface. It's just by itself. The methods are going to be almost the same, but with some slight variations. So if I have a method here called remove task that takes a parameter of a string and returns a string, what I'm going to need to do is keep the same name, but I'm going to have to change the parameters. First of all, it's now going to return void. Why? Because this is asynchronous. We are not going to have anything uh, returned to us immediately after calling the method. So all of the methods in this asynchronous interface will have a return value of void. The first parameter is the same parameter that was in my service interface. Uh, in this case, it's a string. But there's a second parameter then that I add. It is an async callback, and I use uh, generics to define exactly what type of object um, I want this to to be uh, representing. And I will do that with each of my methods. I will add this async callback um, parameter, and we'll see how that's used in just a second. So we've defined the service interface that we want to expose so that our JavaScript on the client side can make some RPC calls. And we created an asynchronous version of that uh, interface so that we can do this in an asynchronous manner through AJAX. Now what we need to do is pull that all into uh, our to-do list. So let's take a look at how I do that. First thing I want to bring your attention to is a task list service async object that I create. So as you know, task list service async is an interface. So we have to use a special method to be able to create an object of that interface. It's uh, gwt.create. And what you pass in as the parameter is the name of the service interface. It will return a version that implements your asynchronous interface, but your parameter has to be the regular service interface. So we pass that in, task service.class. Now if we scroll down, we can take a look.